It's Seth from Motor One, and I am sitting inside the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta. This is the seventh generation Jetta, and I've been driving it and testing it here in North Carolina all day long. So come along for a ride. So it's really easy to remember the engine specification for this Jetta because there's only one. You can get uh, your choice of two transmissions, uh, but for the most part, you're getting a 1.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine connected to an eight speed uh, automatic transmission. You can get a manual just at the very bottom end in the S trim uh, six speed, but otherwise you're going with this very smooth, easy to use eight speed auto. Now, power from the 1.4 is actually pretty good. This is an engine that we're familiar with from the Golf platform. And the truth is that even in this Jetta, it moves the car along smartly. Now, it might be a little bit to hear with this in-car audio, but the fact is I'm getting up to freeway speed right now, and the, the Jetta is really, really quiet. We took it up to well above the posted speed limit, and other than a little noise from the engine and exhaust when you really get on it, the car is, is right where it needs to be in this class in terms of noise, vibration, and harshness, especially at speed. So I happen to be testing the R-Line trim of the Jetta. And while you might hear Volkswagen and R and think that means that this is somewhat of a warmed up version, that's not really the case. Uh, the R-Line is kind of the middle trim and it does look sportier. It has uh, optional wheels that are 17 inches instead of 16. And the graphics make it look sportier than the Jetta S or SE for instance. But there's nothing really performance oriented in this car. In fact, one thing that it doesn't get that the top line trims like an SEL car gets is a sport mode that affects the steering and transmission and things like that. Now, strangely, Volkswagen has given the R-Line the XDS torque vectoring differential that we know from the GTI, which is great. And I have to say that the handling of the car that we've been on largely sort of back roads and on a track situation does feel really pretty good. There's not a lot of understeer and getting out of the corners feels reasonably quick. So I think that differential is doing its job. What's strange to me is that if that's the only thing that you're adding to the version that you're calling R-Line, especially on a car like Jetta, it seems like that's sort of a difficult performance story to tell as opposed to adding a couple of horsepower or giving it a sportier exhaust, for instance. Now, one gigantic advantage that Volkswagen is seeing combining this new eight-speed automatic transmission with that small displacement turbo engine is the fuel economy is set to be really, really good. We're told that the Jetta will get 30 miles per gallon in the city and 40 on the highway, whether or not you get the auto or the, the six-speed manual. So that is very near the top of the compact class in terms of fuel economy and something that is going to appeal to lots of buyers. The lighting elements actually look like they could be alternate reality versions for something like an Audi A3 or A4. The sheet metal is crisp. Uh, there's not a lot going on in the profile view or the rear view especially. The car just looks really clean. Now, on the front end, that's obviously where lots of people will differ. Some people like big grills, some people like a more minimal sort of a look. I will say that there's a lot of face on this Jetta. So that's the one area where maybe I preferred the look of the older Mark VI to this, this brand new Mark VII Jetta. Volkswagen has definitely increased the overall proportions and size of this car, uh, which does a major benefit mostly for interior space. I'm six foot five and I have tons of leg room in uh, the front seats of this car. And I've even experimented a little bit with sitting behind myself in the back. And while it's definitely too tight to have two guys my size, if you had two reasonable size human beings, they would fit in there really, really well. Okay, now you'd expect in the compact car segment that the pricing would be aggressive to stay competitive, and you'd be absolutely right. Volkswagen uh, is starting the Jetta under $19,000 for a basic S with a manual transmission. And the Volkswagen R-Line that I'm in, which is again, sort of a warmed up, sportier looking version of the Jetta, is $22,995. Prices go all the way up through the high $20,000 range with lots more equipment, especially stuff that until recently you might have only found on an Audi. For instance, the very good large 10 and a quarter inch virtual cockpit display is available on the top trims, as is a very nice, big, easy to use eight inch touch screen display. And of course, Volkswagen offers both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so it's really easy to hook up your own phone and use the tech as you'd like. 